good morning and thanks to all of you for joining on this rainy early Monday morning. Uh, today we have Angela Rupert here from the uh, Behavioral and Social Science faculty and she's going to tell us about uh, the motivation behind and pro-environmental behavior and she's doing her research mainly on uh, environmental behavior in the workplace. Yes. Um, so. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Angela Rippert and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the uh, Environmental Psychology Group and that's part of the Social Psychology uh, Group at the Faculty of Political and Social Sciences. And in Environmental Psychology, to explain you a bit, um, Coco. <laughs> Um, in environmental psychology, what we mainly do is we focus on the interaction between people and the environment. And that means, on the one hand, um, how the environment can influence our behavior and our well-being, but also how we can influence the environment and the quality of the environment. So, after today, I hope uh, you will have knowledge about and understanding of where motivations to make sustainable choices come from and how people can be motivated to make uh, sustainable choices. Welcome. I probably do not have to convince you that environmental problems are to a large extent caused by human behavior. But this means that, in all, that we can also reduce environmental problems by changing people's behavior. But what is important in order to reduce environmental problems, the problems the world is facing today, is that people engage in many different things over and again. It's not enough that we just recycle um, our waste, but we also have to, for example, use less energy or travel in a more sustainable way. And so, so what motivates pro environmental behavior? But because people have to engage in many different things over and again, what we do is we focus on general determinants. So not only facts that influence one specific behavior, but factors that can influence many different behaviors. So, so therefore we focus on general determinants, and one such important general determinant are values. And values reflect general goals people have in their life. So what you find important in life in general. And these are rather abstract and general. So, and what research has shown that especially four types of values have proven to be important for sustainable or pro-environmental behavior. And that's first what you see is hedonic values. And hedonic values means that you want to have a nice life, that you have a have pleasure in your life and just feel good. But there are also egoistic values. And egoistic values means that you mainly focus on increasing your resources. And this could be money or wealth. It could also be status, for example. Welcome. And then there are also altruistic values. People who strongly endorse altruistic values are mainly concerned about the well-being of other people. So that's what they find important in life. And there are biospheric values, and then you're mainly concerned about the well-being of nature and the environment. And what you can see is that the top two values, so hedonic and egoistic, are so-called more self-enhancement values, they're focused on yourself. And you have the lower two, and those are the more self-transcendent values, then you value things beyond your own interest. And I think most of you also um, filled out a little questionnaire. And there was also, uh, well, the way how we often measure values, the values questionnaire. And you could see some feedback on how you scored on the values and also in comparison to the other people in this course. And I was very curious if you could, if you uh, could relate to what you, what you, how you scored. And somebody share that maybe. Well, you all, well, not all, but most of you filled out a questionnaire, so you saw it. I saw you uh, nodding. Um, was the, all the people who did the questionnaire were only on this course? 
No. No more no. people? Okay. Um, okay, I scored uh, on egoistic values. I was less than average. And then <coughs> the altruistic was also higher, but at the same time, hedonistic, as in like enjoying pleasures, was a little bit higher, so that surprised me. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it surprised you? You expected something else? Did you score differently? Mm, like yeah, because I expected if people would score, because the uh, other people's score on egoistic values were quite high, uh, as it, as at least compared to me, so I assumed that their hedonistic values would also be much higher than, than it was. Okay. Yeah, well, the other people are the people who follow the course environmental psychology, and the reason why I could, um, yeah, put all the data together is because yeah, you're a small group, mm. <laughs> so that then it's, sense, there's yeah. more to. But those are also people who are interested mm. in environmental psychology. But but what you maybe see, well, maybe you can relate to it, and you think like, oh yeah, that's indeed what I find important in life, or maybe you think like, oh, that's not what I expected. But what you see is that everybody has these different values, only to what extent you find them important, that differs. And it could indeed be that if you have very strong or relatively strong egoistic values, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have strong hedonic values, for example. But I thought it might be nice if you felt this question to get a little bit inside of what values are and what they mean and yeah, what you find important in life. And what research has shown is that, so these four are important, there are much more values, but these are especially important for pro-environmental behavior. And especially <coughs> biospheric values, to the extent to which you find nature and the environment important, uh, yeah, are the strongest and most um, yeah, predictive of pro-environmental behavior. So the stronger people endorse these values, the more likely they are to behave pro-environmentally. And well, you fill this out, and we found this in research, and this, most of this research has been conducted in Europe or in the Netherlands. But I was wondering, do you think that these values, that it also holds maybe in other cultures? Do you have any idea? Yeah? I don't see a really proper relationship between pro environmental behavior and hedonistic lifestyle and egoistic lifestyle. Oh, why? How could this be? I mean, from my intuitive perspective, it would be negative relationship. So yeah. the more you're egoistic, the less it's for that country. But yeah. Yeah, research absolutely. said otherwise? No, 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 they're related. But indeed, biospheric values are positively related. But maybe the stronger your egoistic values, the less likely you are to be. But these are important to understand what, what motivates people to behave from environmentally. But indeed, when you're more strongly hedonically focused, chances are bigger that you will not behave from environmentally. Yeah, true. Yeah. And in other cultures, maybe not everybody's from the Netherlands here. <laughs> well, what what um, what we saw, we tested these values questionnaire not only in the Netherlands or in Europe, but also in other countries such as Mexico or Ethiopia, and Kenya, uh, Japan, and also, for example, in Russia. And our Russian colleague was very skeptical before, and because said like after this post-socialistic era. Like, everybody must be so hedonic, there's no space for the other values, but still we see that people endorse these different values and that they're also predictive of sustainable and pro-environmental behavior. Um, yeah, and so indeed, especially biospheric values, that's what we find are most positively related, while well, egoistic and hedonic. And that's mainly because what we see when we think about, or when we yeah, look at pro environmental behavior, what we often see is that there is a conflict between the values. A, con a conflict between immediate gratification or financial gain and doing what's, for example, best for the environment. So, for example, taking a cold shower in the morning, a very short cold shower, might be good for the environment, but it's, of course, not that nicely or, um, yeah, hedonically, that, that's not that nice, for example. Or, well, cycling through the rain is not as pleasant as driving in by car. Or when you buy a lunch, like maybe locally produced or ecologically, might be more expensive than a regular lunch. So here you can see how 
oftentimes, not always, but in general, prone time mental behavior means this conflict between values. And um, well, in order to overcome this conflict, there are different routes. And so one route is targeting the hedonic and egoistic values by making sustainable or pro-environmental behavior more pleasurable or more attractive financially. And the other route would be targeting biospheric values by making pro-environmental behavior or by making people more focused on, uh, on doing the right thing for the environment. And so that they therefore are less focused on the costs or the inconvenience of pro environmental behavior. So now the question was, so this is theoretically thought, like which route would be most effective? Well, we tested this in an experiment. In, um, well, the idea was that um, what would motivate people to do a tire pressure check? And the idea is that um, yeah, the right tire pressure that saves fuel, and uh, that saves fuel, and that's good for the environment. But it's also financially attractive, of course, because it saves money. And what we did, we uh, we provided the participant. This was in the U.S. at the gas station, and we provi provided people with a coupon for free tire check. And we provided these coupons with different messages. So different groups of people got a different message. And we wanted to see which message is the most effective. And the first one is uh, like, well, you get this free this coupon for this free tire pressure check. Uh, and do this because this is good for the environment. You save fuel and that's uh, yeah, good for the environment. The second one was a financial appeal, as that we said, like, um, yeah, if you have the right tire pressure, then that saves fuel, that saves you money. And it was a neutral one, just take this free coupon. So, different group of people, well, just when they come to the gas station, they saw this boot with these coupons and they could take it. And they only saw one of these. And now my question to you is, which coupon do you think is the most effective? So, yeah? Neutral. Neutral. <laughs> yeah, and why? Uh, I think the um, idea of um, gaining something uh, while it doesn't uh, cost you any effort uh, outweighs all the other um, um, realizations that you may have, say a fi small financial gain or whatever, it doesn't compare to having something for free, Yeah, I would say. So, so you get it for free, but it's not big enough, so... Um, Sorry. <laughs> well, if, the, uh, if there is no, no particular reason, but it's for free, yeah. I would say that maybe that's a trigger, just because it's free. Uh, okay. It's more of a trigger, it's more important than the whole rationale okay. uh, that may come up. That's a nice idea. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I think that the, the finance maybe might be the more most important because uh, I think for the environment it's you have a baseline and then you tell them you can benefit, you can do something more. And then the finance thing, especially because the picture is dollar bills and claims, so it's saying if you don't do this, yeah. you're constantly losing money. And I think that's a more powerful way to motivate people. So kind of the prospect theory. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice. I saw a hand here as well. Yeah, I also thought finance because well they're Americans, so they're more egoistic probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I also think finance, but I also um, think that the picture of the finance is more strong than the one of the environment. So I think that also is something that people uh, yeah, focus on. Okay. Thanks. I, so I heard neutral, I heard financial. Is anybody who thinks maybe the environmental? No. Mm. A doubt? No, maybe. Because uh, with uh, the finance one, um, you uh, <coughs> indirectly say that, yeah, uh, if I, would, as an American, would, uh, well, I'm an American, but 
that. If I uh, would get the, the finance coupon, I would think, um, I would think, well, there's no yeah. <coughs> uh, why do you uh, care about my fi finances? I find it rather uh, private, and with with the, uh, with the environment, it's more like, well, yeah, I can do something uh, I normally don't do. Um, for um, yeah, the, for the, yeah, the bigger picture, um, I, would, I would think I, I think it's, it's, it's yeah something you yeah something that's, that would more easily uh, switch up switch something okay. in your mind. Yeah. Well, well, thanks. So I heard all kinds of rationales for different what, what might be the most effective one. And what we found is that the environmental one was the most effective and the financial one was actually the least effective. And the reason is, is that financially, like, how much can you really gain? Like, how much money do you really save? And the same you could say about the environment, like how much can you really save for the environment. But the thing is, financially, as soon as people make you focus on the financial aspect, you, you become in this more cost-benefit analysis. And then you gotta say, is it worth the effort for the maybe, how much can you save in a year, a couple cents maybe? I, don't, I have no idea. But for the environment, you become more like focused on the environment. And even though it's only a little bit like, only a small, like a little bit good for the environment, it still makes you feel good because it's the right thing to do. So that's what they found. Yeah. Um, I wonder what uh, the reason behind this choice is it appears also in a questionnaire or is it your analysis? Because it might also be, I think, people you, um, get the environmental um, coupon goes to check their tires because also. It can also be a hedonistic reason because we live in a society where, while caring for the environment is given a higher moral value for only caring about your own pockets. Mm -hmm. And that might be people not per se really having this value that the environment is important, but when they get this coupon and they say, if I do this, I feel morally somehow superior than only caring for my pocket money. Yeah. So that can also, it can does not necessarily mean that these people, there are more people who are willing to do this just because they think it's good. It's also for their own feeling. So yeah, that could be. Um, Doing good for the environment can of course also be done for egoistic reasons. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's a whole discussion and maybe you already discussed it in the, about the philosophy. Uh, I have no idea, but I can imagine. Yeah, that's, that's of course, and, and there are some studies that will not discuss those, but about that you, when you do something good for the environment, it also makes you feel good. Like this is about warm glow, that it literally gives you a warm glow, that you feel warmer when you do something good and something good for the environment. So, yeah, very good point. Yeah, yeah but based on this study, uh, yeah, we found that this, but we also, this was one study, but we, yeah, this has been tested over and again. Also with um, driving, if you drive in an eco, uh, what is it? Um, energy efficient way, for example, we also found similar results. So this has been studied over and again. Yeah, but good point. Yeah. Did you also uh, check for age or gender? Because I would imagine that that uh, younger people are sometimes more idealistic and have, uh, in general, more uh, maybe had uh, hedonistic reasons to do that, and that the older generation are more focused on uh, saving money or... Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. I, I no answer to that. So that, that we can keep for maybe for future research. Yeah, no, but that's a good point. Does it hold a different you know, people with different lifestyle or like in their age, different priorities? Okay, so, so what we found is main thing, like what people experience, it's, that it's not really worth the effort sometimes. The same what you see in some of the commercials, how much energy can you save, how much money does it really save you in a year, if it's a couple of cents, like doing this behavior over and again for only a couple of cents, why would you then do it? So we also conducted a study in which we want to see like what if it's worth the effort financially, and this was a study on speeding, so also like if people would keep to the speed limit, and that also saves energy of course, fuel. 
And what it was, uh, people uh, got this uh, GPS device in a car which could track their speed. And um, yeah, so their, 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 um, their driving speed was monitored. And uh, half of the participants, they got a discount on their insurance. And this was a significant discount, so it's pretty worth the effort. And the other group was a control group, so we could see, like, is that another reason why people maybe change their behavior? And so we, we, they installed this GPS, then the, so that's the pre-measure. Then there was a moment in which they got a discount, another moment in which they could get a discount. And then there was, there were, um, yeah, the experiment was kind of over, and then there was also a post-measure to see how they behave afterwards. And what we found is, well this is hopefully clear, well the straight line are the people who received the financial incentives or the discount. And what you see is indeed they speed less. So this intervention is quite effective. You really see that they reduce the speed compared to the control group. In the beginning you often see that people change their behavior because they're monitored. But what you see in the post-measure in the end, so people who got the incentive, as soon as the incentive was removed, they started speeding again. So here you can see that a financial incentive is not necessarily effective when it's not worth the effort, but when it is worth the effort, it can be really effective. But it doesn't mean that there are long-term effects. And it's also quite expensive. So yeah, if you want people to behave in different types of behaviors over and again, also think of what is, what is possible, like what's financially uh, possible to do. So now we have to come up with other strategies. And this is uh, based on a, oh, I forgot to put the reference, sorry. But this was a, a, a meta-analysis with different kinds of social influence as, um, the strategies and what they found is that so, so people can really influence each other and maybe I can send the article later, sorry about that, um, is that block leaders are important. So what other people um, yeah, in the community kind of leaders about it, what kind of behavior they show, that's very effective on how people are in, what they will do. Commitment, so when people indicate like um, Mainly when they say publicly, I will do this behavior in the next coming week. I will try to reduce uh, energy by this amount of percentage, or in the coming years, maybe more realistic. Uh, that is very effective. There is also modeling, so when other people, important people, such as maybe famous people, what they do, you are influenced by that. But what is interesting is that also less effective influence strategies, and that's for example, Feedback on group performance, so what you often now see is with energy use, is that people receive feedback via these smart meter systems, and when it's on a group level, it doesn't say that much. Uh, social comparison and social norms, so what other people do. Uh, <coughs> so this is just a small overview, you can later look up like, more what they are. But what is the main message about this is that the more people are involved, in social influence, that means, for example, when you provide them feedback, or when you give them information, or when you let them make a commitment, so that the more involved they are, the more it's targeted on the person, the more effective they are. Yeah. Would, in this case, uh, feedback on your individual performance, so your energy usage, would that be more effective? Yeah. Or would that be effective at all, or not? Yeah, well, there's, that's now studied a lot on what's most effective, but you can think of individual feedback in different ways. So you can have feedback just on what you did, for example, with the values, just how you scored. But you can also give feedback on how you scored, for example, energy use, in comparison to last year. And that's already more effective. Or you can have individual feedback in comparison to similar people um, as you or people in your neighborhood. But what is then most effective is you, uh, I think that's, that has been found until so far, but it, has been, it is still being studied, and that's if you compare yourself, for example, to last year, but when there's also a goal attached to it. So like last year, or you say like, I want to decrease my energy use with 10%, and then you get feedback on how you did, 
and then you also maybe get some tips on how you can reach your goal. That is then the most of it. Yeah. Would it be an idea for the, the energy companies that if you use less energy than last year, like one or two percent, then you, you uh, pay less for the following year if you could continue using less energy? Would that be one of those uh, social influence? Or would it be a strategy to change your behavior? I don't know. Well, the thing is, when you lose, you when you use less energy, you already save money. But the thing is, when as soon as you start making people focus on the money, then we come again to that: is it worth the effort? <coughs> it should really then be worth the effort. Otherwise, you make people feel, okay. I saved this. I saved two euros over this whole year. That's not worth the effort. But if you do it, maybe you make them feel good about it. Like you save this energy, you can do it even more, um, whatever in which way, and then you make them focus on doing what's good. And that maybe, even though it's a little bit, it still might make them feel good. Yeah. So, I, the question? Yeah, no, just a point that. The money is always external motivation, so you are maybe less uh, less um, continuous with doing good stuff. It's just external motivation, and if you really understand the reason for why you do it, it's internal motivation. I think that's an important point. Yeah, yeah, good point. I will come back to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then the second, this was the first route to see via uh, yeah, um, uh, strength or by targeting egoistic, maybe hedonic values. And the other route is by targeting biosphere values by making people more focused on benefiting the environment. But now it's important also to understand a little bit like how, how do values influence behavior? And I have this short video. <laughs> Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the last bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's goat below stairs. I was vlogging my petunias in the walking shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. But, but, but how did you know? Madam, as any horticulturist will tell you, one does not clock the cheaters until they is out to take her away. It's just a matter of observation. The real question is how observant were you? Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the last bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs. I was planting my petunias in the walking chair. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. Yeah, so, so the main, and this is just an illustration. Uh, <coughs> right. Yeah, this is just an illustration on how values influence our behavior. So in values determine what we find important and also what we focus on and how we interpret things around us. So that, that's, that's just an illustration. Um, and so now how are values then related to sustainable behavior or sustainability? And this was a study we conducted on uh, values and acceptability of different energy sources and in this case nuclear energy and it was on egoistic and uh, biosphere values and what it showed is that people for example would strongly endorse egoistic um, values so they find, they find it important to uh, increase their resources and the wealth or status is that 
they focus on the egoistic aspects of nuclear energy. And for example, nuclear energy is relatively cheap. So they evaluated those egoistic aspects as more positive. Therefore, they had this overall positive evaluation of nuclear energy. And that, the lead them that they even also um, evaluated other aspects of nuclear energy as more positive. So also, they thought it was environmentally more, yeah, more sustainable. But the other one, yeah? Uh, <coughs> uh, um, these egoistic values, um, it seems to me that uh, they're very much focused on uh, on uh, yeah, um, financial uh, financial measures. So would it uh, would this uh, wouldn't this uh, better be uh, financial values, strong financial values instead of egoistic values? Because the egoistic values is uh, uh, being you in the center of the universe and therefore uh, yeah, being the best for yourself. But maybe um, the financial values or the financial values can also be better for uh, everyone that works in the uh, in the power pl uh, plant, for example, the, the employees, the, uh, the workers, and every uh, everything that's uh, yeah, that is supported by the financial uh, performance of this uh, of this power plant. Yeah, but but egoistic values are really really about yourself. So how you can. That what you find important when you strongly endorse these values, if you can increase your resources, and that can be financial, but it can also be your status, for example. Okay. So, or um, yeah, or your power, yeah, yeah, how how powerful you are. Okay. And uh, what it is is that people who strongly endorse these values, they're mainly focused on well, on the behavior, on the consequences for their egoistic values. So when you think like, will I behave pro-environmentally, will I maybe uh, drive by car to work? Well, you can then think like, okay, how much does it cost me? But also, it can increase my status. So that's, those are the aspects you focus on. And when you have stronger biosphere values, you might be more strongly focused on the consequences of the behavior for those values. So that's people, yeah, so they focus on yeah, so in this case it's called egoistic because, yeah, that's just a term that it's used, yeah. but it's that you find that important. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah? Okay, so, so when people strongly endorse biospheric values, what we found is that they evaluated, uh, well, they looked at uh, the more consequences for their strongest values, so the biospheric values, and yeah, well, then they focused on the environmental risks. Like, might something go wrong, or uh, the, the nuclear waste? And that they evaluate negatively. Therefore, they created this overall <coughs> negative evaluation of nuclear power. And also, evaluated more negatively um, on the egoistic aspect. So they also didn't think it was that, cheap, that much um, cheaper, for example. So this shows how values can influence how you evaluate different aspects of a situation and how it can then influence how you behave in a specific situation. And this was interesting because this was during a time this study was conducted when they were planning on building a new nuclear power plant in the Netherlands. It was just before the Fukushima accident. And so they were really interested in how can we motivate people to accept this nuclear power plant. And this gives some insight on like how can you then target it? Can you really say like yeah, but it's very good for the environment? Yeah, but if people already have this negative evaluation, yeah, probably that message is not coming through. Okay, so but then values are relatively yeah. yeah um, I think the I'm going to say this. Uh, the the nuclear. Uh, Power. I think there are uh, two groups within the pro-environmental mindset, which mm -hmm. one says nuclear power is a solution, one says it isn't. So how, how are those uh, divided? Yeah, at this moment, I don't know exactly. I knew, I uh, think, in the past. That's what I, I think how it was in the past. It was not that clear that 
that sometimes the environmental risks might be really high, so that even people who find the environment important, they thought like this is a pretty relatively clean solution because there's now uh, CO2 emissions, for example. Mm -hmm. But now I think um, the further yeah, we come in time, that people really know that okay, the nuclear waste is a really strong problem, and also with the accidents, for example. I think this, uh, yeah, it's not that strong two groups anymore, and then it's more that people with, from egoistic reasons, they have this positive image, it's cheap, and therefore they also have this, but it's also relatively good for the environment, in comparison to other energy sources, of course. That, that's interesting, because now the, the egoistic people will do something for the environment by choosing a nuclear. Yeah, because they they already have this positive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, if I may, uh, if I may uh, say yeah, something about that. Um, uh, I did a small study on this uh, topic. Um, um, basically, uh, questioning. Uh, well, you've got of obviously the negative sides of possible accidents, possible accidents, which is very conditional, or the. Um, negative effects of uh, closing um, the nuclear plants that are being used around the world. Uh, obviously, after the Fukushima accident, um, Germany g immediately uh, closed, uh, or at least uh, set the, um, the states to close all their nuclear facilities, as well as uh, Japan, etc. And this basically um, uh, destroyed all the uh, efforts made to go to a reduction in CO2 emissions over the past, I, saw, I think, like 20 years. So even though people think that they are doing something good for the environment, um, it's just because of the condition uh, that there may be something going wrong in the future with these plants, they effectively step back 15 years at least um, regarding CO2 emissions, which are having a direct, a direct effect, uh, certainly. Uh, so I'm not sure if people who uh, want to close these uh, nuclear facilities understand very well how um, they are um, affecting the environment, um, because they are only thinking of the condition that it is to be that it may happen, uh, various, um, and it's also local. Um, I mean, obviously, Fukushima was a big accident, but it was still kind of local, whereas the CO2 emissions are global, which is, I believe, a far wider uh, problem. Yeah, but this, uh, to react to this, this is what we found in the study, and this just shows how values can influence how you perceive the risks and how you evaluate, for example, different energy sources. And that's also now very relevant with the gas production, for example, here, or with all the new types of energy. But it's not to say that, I'm not saying I'm in favor or against, or we should be in favor or against nuclear power, or, but this is just how to show how values can evaluate, uh, influence people's acceptability. Yeah, but interesting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge problem, very complex and yeah, difficult for people to really understand. Yeah? And I agree with what you said that, um, um, that it might be like uh, in the long run that it's not good for environment to close, closing those things. But I think value is also, there are different kinds of value. Here we can talk about nuclear um, plants and say how they are good for just, uh, in, uh, reducing CO2, but if you live in Fukushima, there's a different matter. Whatever value you might have, something will um, predominate that value that your own safety and your own well-being. And at that moment, it's also kind of value. And it will be, I think, it will be very vague for them to talk about being good for the environment because you are kind of in a pre-victim uh, status. And I think for most people, it will, even if there's no accident, it will be very difficult for them to argue that, well, there's a very small chance of accident, so I'm not going to worry about it. So it's, it's, it's for us, if we, we're not living in a city with a nuclear plant, it's very easy to talk about, yeah, these are our values and we think it's good for the environment. But if, I, I would assume that if you live in a city with a plant, it would be a totally different matter. And that also changes your values. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks.
And also I would not argue that it's not really in the first place because Fukushima mm -hmm. accepting the whole Pacific Ocean and the Chernobyl now in place Fungi, fungus in Germany, and so therefore we can eat them anymore in Saxony. And also, um, <coughs> isn't it that you produce waste, which is affecting our environment for uranium 235, at least one, 4.5 billion years? Uh, yes. Uh, you mind that when I say local, um, uh, it, it, this may be a huge uh, swath of, of an area, right? Um, but still, it's not global, and um, that's the main difference I'm making here. I mean, the, uh, the nature system, ecosystem of the Pacific will influence the whole earth. Okay, but, but this is a very interesting discussion. And, <laughs> but, uh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not really <laughs> mean. Um, but if I can continue on the behavioral factors, then we can keep on this discussion maybe in the break. Uh, so, because <laughs> it's very technical and I cannot say anything about it. But uh, about values, <laughs> they're relatively abstract and relatively stable over time. And as you already said, but how do they influence then behavior? By like, why would we beha we behave on our values? That has been studied in different uh, contexts, in, for private pro environmental behavior, but also at the workplace. So my own research. Um, but, uh, and we did this in different studies, and what the idea is, this is the values, identity, personal norms model, maybe it's a little bit small on the screen, but what the idea is, so values are abstract and relatively stable, and therefore they influence behavior indirectly. So not directly, I have these values, so I behave, but what it is, so um, what this model says is that the stronger people endorse biosphere values, the more likely they are to see themselves as a type of person who behaves pro environment. So it influences their identity, how they see themselves. And the stronger people have an environmental self-identity, the more likely they are to feel morally obliged to behave pro environment. So this, 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 this is this intrinsic motivation. Because what it is, if you see yourself as somebody who behaves pro environmentally, you want to be consistent with how you see yourself. Otherwise you get this conflict. And so the stronger people endorse <coughs> these personal norms, the more, like, the more they feel morally obliged within themselves, so this intrinsic motivation, the more likely they are to behave pro environmentally. And we test this so in different contexts, in households, but also in the workplace. And especially the workplace I find interesting because would it also be a place in which you feel morally obliged? Like, this is a place where you might not feel maybe responsible for all the behaviors you do. So we tested this, and what we found is that indeed the stronger people endorse biospheric values, the more yeah, they value nature and the environment, the more likely they are to see themselves as someone who behaves pro environmentally. And this is all still very general, right? how you see yourself in general. But what we found is that this influences the intrinsic motivation to behave pro-environmentally at work. So they take their values, their identity, to the workplace, also in households, but they also take this to different contexts in which they are. And that, okay, so that was already really interesting to see that people feel morally obliged. But then the question is, how does this influence their behavior? Because that's what it's about in the end. And we saw that this indeed influenced different types of behavior, such as energy use, so they use less energy, uh, waste prevention, like printing less, but also they recycled more. But when you look, maybe you see the numbers, they're very small. So what we found is we saw that personal norms influence different types of behaviors, not only one, but different ones, but rather weakly. Yeah. Well, recycling, them. does it mean recycling at work? Yeah. Does that depend on your boss, if they are going to recycle or not? Yeah, so that, that was my question indeed. Like, you see that these people feel morally obliged, the more likely to behave pro environment, but only rather weakly. And my question was like, why do you think that would be the case? Yeah, so we already gave an answer before the question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are these numbers percentages? or? I, I no, these are the effect sizes. 
Yeah, and that goes and from minus one, one to one. Okay. Yeah. So point two is rather weak. That's that's really weak. It doesn't uh, it has an influence, but not strongly. And what we found with additional, additional interviews, and we found that like, people want to behave pro environmentally, but sometimes they're just not able to. So this means that when people are intrinsically motivated, the only thing you have to do is facilitate and make them able to behave upon these intrinsic motivations, and that's a rather cost-efficient way to let people behave in a way you would like to. Oh, it's already time. Yeah, so then I will quickly give one more study, and that's... Um, so this shows not besides individual factors, such as your values, that also the context can influence your behavior. And the context needs to be facilitating, but the context can also strengthen people's focus on benefiting the environment. Like, the extent to which you want to benefit the environment is so based on your values, but also on contextual facts. And here you can think of anything in the surrounding that can make you focus on it. So, for example, maybe even already, this green office with some interventions might you maybe think about doing what's good for the environment. And we wanted to test this in a study in which we wanted to see like, if an organization finds taking care of the environment important, so leaders if it's written in a mission statement. And we were also interested who can be motivated then. Are it those who do already care about the environment? So who are already interested, or maybe those, horrible pictures, but those who might not really care about the environment. Can you motivate those? So, who would be, I will go quickly. So we wanted this to, to test this with corporate, the extent to which corporate environmental responsibility, so the extent to which an organization finds it important, and people are working in an organization, so surrounded by these contextual factors that show this organization finds it important, or not. And what we found, oh, this should be the other way around, so what we found, and this is energy use, and on the left side you see people with weak biosphere values who do not really care about taking care of the, the well-being of the environment. You see that the stronger they perceive that the organization find nature and environment important, the more likely they are to use less energy. So they behave more pro-environmentally when they think that the organization in which they work finds it important. But when you look at people with stronger biosphere values, so on the other side of the graph, you see that people with stronger values, they kind of already behave pro-environmentally. So they are kind of already focused on doing what's good for the environment, because that's what they find important. But those who do not really care for themselves, they can be focused by contextual factors. And then, um, yeah, we will skip this. Uh. <laughs> so, what uh, to go to the conclusion is uh, so well, th there's a conflict uh, between biosphere values and the other values when it comes to sustainable behavior. And in order to, to uh, promote pro environmental behavior, to motivate people to behave sustainable, you have to reduce this conflict in some way. And there were two routes targeting egoistic and hedonic values by making it more pleasurable or more financially attractive. It's not always effective, because it's not always worth the effort, but when it is effective, it can be effective. But the long-term effects, yeah, you have to keep on uh, making, keeping it financially attractive. And the other route was targeting biosphere values, because those can make people focus on benefiting the environment, and that's first of all based on the values people have, but also on contextual factors. And that it could especially, and that's interesting, motivate those who do not really care about the environment in the first place. And this, well, this is important because targeting this focus could not only lead to one specific behavior, but to multiple behaviors, and also in the long term. So now let's uh, have a break. <laughs> So now uh, I gave a lot of information, and this is only a small part of what, yeah, what I can tell you in in in, in this short time. Uh, but now, well, 
this is what maybe motivates people, but now I would like to discuss more like how can we promote sustainable behavior, because I think that's also what I would like to know. So I have two questions. I have some um, campaigns and some interventions that has been uh, out there. Uh, and I want you to think like which theoretical principle or assumption underlying the campaign in your view, and I will show that later. And to what extent do you think that this campaign will be effective? So which was their main idea? So you can think about it when you look at it. What was the idea of the person who made this campaign? And do you think it will be effective? Every second, every minute, every day, our world is changing. Climate change is real. Very soon, within your lifetime, every person on the planet will have been touched by the destructive force of climate change. This is the biggest threat humankind has ever faced. Humans have caused this, and we can stop it. There is still time. Stop climate change in its tracks. Add your name to the call for a global deal to stop catastrophic climate change. Okay. So this is one campaign. So what, what, what do you think is the main idea behind this campaign? What, yeah? To shake people, uh, to shake people, uh, to wake them up. Uh, yeah. What they're doing now. To, to make them aware of yeah. environmental problems? Yeah. Yeah? Think? Yeah. yeah. The locus of control is still in us, so that therefore we can, uh, can act and change it. Yeah, so create this internal locus of control. We have to act. And can we act? And can. Okay. Yeah. Give a sense of urgency. It's like these dramatic yeah. images and time is ticking. You know? Yeah. 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 Do you do you think that this is effective? No. And why not? Because it uh, makes it really hard to grasp for people because it seems like a really big global problem, and then people are like, oh, well, I don't think I'm gonna have any effect if I do this or that. Oh, so then, then it just shows it's a huge problem yeah. and maybe we all have to do something with what I do. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's kind of your efficacy you have, yeah? yeah I think it would be better to have something that you can do yeah. instead of do something that, okay, what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so indeed I think it shows it makes people aware of the problem and the urgency of the problem that we have to like do something but what do we have to do? Yeah, this is written there. Go to the website. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I think this is abundant in information of what to do. Sorry? And I think this either this few letters only, if you type it in an internet, there will be an abundance of information what to do. Yeah, but then you have to take the step to indeed do that. Do you think that people will go there? I hope so, and, and I think it's uh, strongly context dependent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Uh, earlier on another slide, I think you said something about social not being least effective, and this somehow, if I would watch that as a person, no matter if I'm interested or not in environmental behavior, uh, would compare me to, or put me into a group of a social norm where I'm guilty of whatever I'm doing, no matter how good or bad I act in the sense of environment. And by that I would probably sense a certain extent of guilt and would automatically distance from whatever they are going to say towards me because I want to not be guilty for whatever they are accusing me of. Yeah, it could also be. It's very dark. Yeah. It also shows what you often see with social norm, like we created this problem. So that also shows like everybody is behaving unsustainable. Apparently that's the kind of thing we do. Yeah. So then maybe also, yeah. So there are different aspects. Uh, yeah? 
I mean, you earlier also said that uh, the more we can identify with some other peers who are maybe doing the same, uh, the more likely we are to act in a similar way. And this only says, yeah, you're acting like this. So you're part of the group where you might not want to be a part of the group. Yeah. I also know a lot of people who would react to this like um, the government should do something about this or big companies should do something about this, not like I'm going to do this and this because indeed it's not clear what you can do and I think many people think uh, it only has a big effect if the government or companies start doing it. Yeah, I, I agree with, with, with what you say, I think so too. I cannot look into their heads, of course, what they really were thinking, but I can. it is kind of a strong, yeah, they have nice images, it's kind of confronting with all the problems we have, but it also it's not really clear on, okay, what should I now exactly do, except for going to a website and hopefully find more information. It's also not very positive, like, it's kind of dark that... Well, you can still do something, but time is ticking. It feels like time's already up or something. Okay, so then I have another one. Let's see if it works. What do you think? What was the idea behind it? Yeah, this, this one is a little bit better because at least uh, it has one suggestion that you can uh, change in your behavior. In that way, it's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, so again, it, 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 yeah? And I think now, whereas the other, the first one was more on the cognitive rational side, now they're using the mean of arts to enhance emotional understanding. Negative emotions rather than positive ones, which is also nice. Yeah, yeah, good one, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, uh, every, uh, yeah almost everybody uh, has a driver license or drives a car sometimes, and this is true. Yeah, really a, an appeal to everyone who is able to drive to, uh, yeah, if you don't, do, uh, rather don't do it, then uh, rather take the, take the subway, because then you. Uh, personally, uh, make already the first step uh, to uh, living in the iceberg. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because, again, this tries to create awareness, with, and maybe via emotions, by showing these beers. And this now we see it as an advertisement, but of course, it was kind of an art project. Uh, I don't know where it was, somewhere in the US probably. Um, so, and it shows kind of what behaviors or what you can do. But it's interesting that you all interpret it as, okay, you should take the subway. We also have shown this video before, and it's like, okay, but what is exactly, like, if you're walking there on the street, that you also have to understand, like, what does it mean? I, the first time I saw it, I didn't really get it, that it came from uh, the heat of the, of the subway to show that that's a good way to travel instead of the car. So, uh, yeah, you, you wanted to say something? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I do uh, like uh, the idea that they uh, kind of like uh, close the loop where they, um, because uh, climate change uh, is like this very broad problem which returns on you, say, in the next 30 years. But uh, now they sh show you something really beautiful 
And um, very uh, shortly after that, they let uh, it basically die. And uh, instilling a, a sense of loss for yourself, because I suppose that most people who wandered there uh, would say like, hey, this, this is totally cool. And then directly lose that, uh, that uh, moment, um, creating also an urgent, a sense of urgency and maybe personal urgency to do something about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so again, this is kind of uh, similar, a little bit similar as the other one, the basic principles behind it, more on the emotions maybe. And here they more kind of make clear like what the behavior is or what you can do. The only thing is, so it should also be really clear, and I think you're really just really smart that you saw it immediately. <laughs> but not everybody sees it immediately, what's the idea. So, again, when you give behavior, like also make clear, yeah, it should be clear what the behavior indeed is. So. But nice. Um, and oh, fortunately, this one is in Dutch, so I will say later if it's unclear what it's about, I can tell you what they said. Het is zover, dan komt vloerisolatie. Zonder rommel in een halve dag geregeld. Je hoopt dat ze het uitstellen, maar nee hoor. Energiebesparen doen je nu. Het is ook wel heel aantrekkelijk, want je krijgt ook nog een subsidie wanneer je twee isolatiemaatregelen in één keer neemt. Voor ik weet, ligt mijn baan op de tocht. Ontdek je een paar stappen wat energiebesparen jou oplevert. Kijk op energiebesparen.nu.nl so, um, yeah, what it mainly is, it says, like, uh, you should save energy, you can do this by insulating or is insulating your house. But what you also saw is that this, yeah, so that, that's, what, that's what I kind of said, and then uh, the dog also said, it's kind of, it's really attractive, because you also save money. And then check out the website. Yeah, so uh, is it clear? <laughs> So what what is here? What uh, what do you think about this one? Yeah, uh, like uh, like we said before that uh, uh, with the uh, the tire check uh, you can save uh, you can save uh, you cannot save a lot of money, and uh, I never bill, uh, paid a bit energy, but uh, with the energy bill I think you can save more money by. Uh, what the dog said, you can save more money by being environmentally friendly as well. So uh, yeah, that I think that would trigger a lot of people to uh, to uh, check their uh, check their energy uh, use uh, more often and maybe change it. Okay. Yeah. So you think it's effective? Yeah. 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 And I think many people think. I would think so. Uh, isolating your house and doing things like that is quite expensive and the dog says it's not, so mm. and maybe you are more willing to do it. Yeah. 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 I, I, I understand Dutch, but I, I didn't really understand the, what was the dog doing there. <laughs> it was kind of this, like you have this stuffed animal you can put like on the door so there's no uh, what draft. Is it? draft. So then he would be out of job. <laughs> yeah. I asked the same thing at my parents' house. I was like, what's the dog doing there? And they're like, oh, it's against the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but what but, but was for me, when I looked at this advertisement, the only thing I did, or not the only thing, but the main, was look at the hole in the ground the whole time. And it also, and the dog is kind of like talking like, uh, I don't know, draining kind of the energy out of you when he talks. <laughs> Things for me, so it also for me it kind of enhanced the conflict between values. So you want to do something good, and maybe they also focus on that it can really save some money, but it's also really inconvenient because they have this hole in the ground and people coming over like making yeah. So that for me it was also a little bit like oh, it kind of enhances the conflict that you might already have. But that's just what I think. Maybe uh, yeah. So, who knows, maybe it is effective, uh, but it's just to, indeed, think about the different aspects. Um, and then I think I have one more. Yeah. Thank you. 
much a commercial, more an intervention kind of thing. Perfect. But all the people that were growing in the glass were already going to throw their glass away, so I don't think it has any impact on the environment. Okay. Yeah, they did say that that now in that one night, so like how many people, whatever. Okay. But uh, yeah. Yeah, but if they knew about that thing, I, I would block them and ask for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to to. Go to the pen one. Yeah. yeah. You, so you are going to throw your glass full of light anyway. Yeah, so in the sense it's effective that it will be used, but not effective that more people will be convinced. Okay. Yeah? Any other uh, you want to? Yeah, it's again an extrinsic motivation. When people don't understand intrinsically that it's a good idea to to recycle glass and further this extrinsic motivation costs as well money and energy. Yeah. <coughs> and, and, and maybe it is fun, but then you can always think like after some weeks, how fun does it stay? Mm -hmm. Well you keep on going there. I also don't think for the people living there it might be very fun, but uh, <laughs> that's something else. Yeah, so that's something, this might be really effective, but then again, in the long term, would it then also still be effective? That's something to think about. So, these were some examples, and now, we have still some time, I want you to make some small groups, maybe with three or four, whatever uh, fits best. Uh, and I want you to think about the behavior you want to target, the sustainable behavior. You can think of which one you find very interesting. Then think about which factors do you think promote or inhibit this behavior. So what would make people do or do not engage in this behavior? And then, based on that, which intervention or which strategy would you employ to change the behavior? So that would be a strategy or an intervention targeting those factors that you think can influence the behavior. So we can do, to, to what time do we have? A quarter past or? To, until when is the? Between quarter past and half uh, past. So. Okay, so then maybe until 10 past and then we can later, then you can share your ideas and then we can see what we think about it. It will be effective. Yeah? Thank you. 
So what, what would make people be willing or not willing to? Yeah, this is what I wanted to say now. Which is so what would inhibit this behavior is people need to take responsibility for their um, for their uh, uh, stuff they have published for I have. So they need to clean, they need to carry, it's kind of heavy. I don't know. I think it should be saying that within this kind of system we have and everybody needs to take care and responsibility for their actions. Okay. So people have to have this feeling of responsibility. They need to be aware of the problem and they need to feel responsible to do something. Good. Okay. And then how will you, what will be your strategy or your intervention? Okay. Yeah, uh, in the first place, a paper cup where a uh, paper where it's written where the sensory is and how to manipulate it. And I personally, I would be totally fine to stand next to the coffee machine all day advertising <laughs> this possible. <laughs> and I would do this happily and with love. And we also thought because at the cafeteria or at cafes, sometimes you get like 10 cents off when you bring your own cup. Mm -hmm. But many people are not aware of it. And if you would promote that more and say like, um, if you use less paper cups, it's first good for the environment. You're happy because you're doing something good for the environment. And it even saves you like 10 cents. And if you do it more often, then in the end it would save you a lot of money. And we also thought that the big um, coffee companies like Starbucks, that they should just promote it more that it's possible to like get a mug at Starbucks, or that you just bring your own cup. Because they have this huge promotion with the paper cups, and if like you would change it there a bit, people would become more aware, because so many people go there. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then because we, we talked about the incentives, so the 10 cents, and, and that would be then worth the effort? Yeah, yeah. I, I would think so. But I think for me, for example, it's more important that I just don't use paper cups. Yeah. Because of, there are paper cups. Yeah. Yeah, and it could also be that the, the 10 cents itself is not really, but it's more a reminder. Yeah. So it's not automatically. The same maybe, oh, we're going to discuss that maybe, the plastic bags. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's more this reminder that it's now not automatically given, but then they ask, do you want it? And they have to pay for it. And that's the moment maybe behavior, like this habit is kind of broken. Because I can imagine that with, with coffee, it's kind of habitual. But every day, maybe at the same, even at the exact same time, people get caught on the machine. On the other hand, I think it would work better instead of saying, oh, if you use mugs instead of paper cups. Uh, so you save 10 cents and you can say, if you want to use paper cups, it costs you 10 cents more. Do you want to pay extra for it? And then most people will think, oh, I'm not decreasing my price. So, oh, I save so little, but I have to pay extra and I don't want to pay extra for it. Mm -hmm. Although it's the exact same thing. And that is related, well, I think, he, that, who, who said it uh, in the first part, is that then it's related to the prospect, were you? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yes, it was me. Yeah. yeah, so people value uh, losses as much stronger as gains. So that could indeed be, uh, yeah, losing 10 cents feels as much more than gaining 10 cents. Yeah. But isn't this in behavior of a uh, mindset of discrimination mm -hmm. because you know, they are, I mean, this is a paper cut example but if you take it on a big scale you would say that people who do not have money do not have the uh, uh, will not have the ability to purchase something only because of anything what you decided is pro environmental but is this anything is it, I'm just referring to the way you formulate it not but you change yeah, anything. But you, you, you discriminate. You exclude people who do not have money. How do you exclude them then? Because they will not be able to purchase this kind of stuff. Okay, so but now, now it's more expensive. It's, you have two yeah. euros and at the cafeteria you can pay one euro ninety if you bring your own cup and just send your friend. But instead of saying that, you say one euro ninety with, is if, if you want to drink it in a mug, but you have to pay two euros if you want to pay, take a picture. Okay. It's the same thing. It's not you pay more. So it's not just, okay. yeah. I thought you wanted to raise it to two euros. No, 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 you just, for 
opportunity because people would think, oh, but I, why should I pay extra for that? So why should I pay to, me, to you and I can just pay 190? Mm -hmm. like, you just, at least with me, it would make more of an impact yeah, yeah. in my mind than thinking, oh, I just gain 10 cents. Yeah, but, but one last thing, because I also want to hear the other interventions, actually. Um, you also said you would be willing to stand next to the coffee machine to show this. Uh, and what, what's the, 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 the idea behind it? If we could see it, possibly. <laughs> maybe they feel my, my happiness about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this would maybe a little bit like this modeling that you show the behavior. Uh, yeah. Okay, nice, thank you. Uh, who else wants to share? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the three of us, uh, we wanted to target uh, the behavior of uh, throwing away cigarette butts on the ground because um, yeah, it's not only like rubbish on the floor, but it's also a lot of uh, chemicals that go into the environment, which is really not good. Yeah, and um, yeah, some of the factors that promote uh, throwing away cigarette butts on the ground we thought because it's it's an easy thing to do for cigarette smokers and maybe they have a lack of awareness and also it might be a bit of showing off their status on oh yeah I can just uh, be cool and throw it on the ground um, so yeah we thought that yeah one of the things that um, interventions that could um, inhibit it is to place more roosters on the ground like to throw your butts away and so make that a more common thing but um, yeah we thought one of the most important things I think is also to uh, create uh, yeah, the awareness of um, yeah, the effects on the environment and we were kind of brainstorming a bit on how to do it and maybe like for example after a week collect all the cigarette butts on the ground and store it in like one big see-through container and then with all the percentages of chemicals that are in there and also on the other sides of the container like what kind of effects it has on the environment or make a commercial about it and show it on TV so that it's, it's actually becomes a more common thing for people to think oh yeah hey wait this is something that's not good and why not just throw it away in a um, yeah another rooster or a yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but nice things. What 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 do you think? Um, I, I was this weekend. I was in Rotterdam at the Bijenkorp, and I saw people doing this, and I and I had the urge to tell them. Yeah. But I, I couldn't. I, I but I think it would be interesting to motivate people to do that. Mm -hmm. Like say, what what are you doing? Uh, because then they will think, yeah, what am I doing? I think it's a habit, like, exactly, yeah. they, they don't realize that you're doing it. And that is really weird that yeah. you develop a habit that is, yeah, destroying the environment and, and, and making a place differently. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about anything to motivate other people to say something about it? Oh yeah, maybe that can also be in like a commercial kind of video that, that it's kind of like somebody throws it away and somebody else says, hey, what, what are you doing, you know? And then it explains what the effects are. Yeah. Like I think something simple like a video can already make a, a change yeah. in that. So people think, oh yeah, indeed, like... Yeah, and yeah. I think you should do like it in real life, not actors, but yeah. have somebody that is like strong and wants to say that and then film it him filming or her doing it and then like to do something like a street lab uh, yeah. and you know, everybody, everybody knows that it's the street guy four guys uh, doing social experiments. If you ask them to do this oh, that's actually a nice idea. And then <laughs> put it on uh, mm -hmm. national TV and Yeah. So I hear that here that what you would create is kind of the social sanctioning. So if yeah. you do it, it's not socially accepted and people yeah, will not like you for yeah. doing that, yeah. creating that. But you don't even have to uh, say it's bad, but yeah. only the asking what are you doing. Yeah. Yeah. But then uh, I think that would be enough. Okay. Yeah? yeah. I saw on the slide that that, oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> The slide that social norms were the least effective, yeah. and I really think if you go up to somebody who's just smoking a cigarette and throwing it away, hey, what are you doing? I think that's really, I, th I think you're going to get a lot of resistance. Yeah, so. yeah but the other, on the other hand, like you said, if you take a role model, at least that was from the things that we saw, that that works, like model or an actor. 
contract or somebody that's kind of a leader in society. And that person just does that. And then uh, you film that and send it out, then that might work. And then it's also kind of a social thing. So I don't know exactly how that, because I think it's kind of connected to each other. Although. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a meta analysis on different strategies. And yeah. these kind of work and they have an influence on behavior. But what this meta analysis showed that actually the social norms. Yeah, are less effective, but also it could be like it could be different reasons. Maybe it's not like a social norm has to be um, salient mm -hmm. in order to be effective. You have to know, and um, if it's if you want to reduce social sanctioning, yeah, there should also be people around who could maybe sanction you. If you're on your own, nobody's there, then maybe the social norm is also not very salient. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I interpret it in a way like modeling like uh, somebody just does a good behavior and he sets an example and so she wants more like General. wagging your finger like you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that you shouldn't no so it's more the perception of what you think that other people expect you to do yeah. but it's a little bit related to what you said yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a really interesting idea as well because at the university they're trying to be uh, smoke free and they have these signs everywhere, but people are still smoking in different places, also uh, throwing their butts in the ground. So I think it would also be a nice idea if something like a video or something else that that would actually be made from the university and then yeah. shown to everyone because that's also something that the university will say we don't think this is appropriate behavior. Um, and then uh, they also send a signal about that smoking is not really healthy for you as well, because I think that's also a very important part. Yeah, and I can imagine, I'm, I'm not a smoker, I never smoked, but I can imagine that the reason why I smoke is kind of really hedonic. And at this moment, when you think about I want to have my cigarette, maybe addic addiction comes in as well. Then maybe you're not even thinking about that it might be harmful to throw it on the ground because you're. Think about feeling good right now yourself when you think about the dying values. Yeah. Okay, one last point. Yeah, but, but you can explain this also the direction and what is behind addiction and what kind of. I mean, we're in an academia context, so you can assume that people will be able to grasp what is going on with the brain of so if they're interested in what kind of neurotransmitter are working. So this would be also an idea for this advertising. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so difficult. They also did some studies at the UMCG and at the hospital. Like that's the least thing they want is people smoking at the main entrance of the hospital. Yeah. But it's so difficult to get people moving away from that. It's not only patients, but also the people working there, for example. And there are some lot of studies trying to yeah, change behavior, but uh, it's not easy to change. Okay, uh, we have two more behaviors. You want to share? Yeah, sure. Um, we want to reduce the consumption of meat uh, because it ha is bad for the environment in very many ways. Um, but we think um, what you see now is uh, information giving about how bad it is for the environment and stuff. I think people already know that, um, but they have to have the opportunity to see an alternative for eating meat. And we thought about um, introducing it at um, uh, cafeterias. Yeah, cafeterias uh, um, at work. So uh, they, then you have the information part and also the um, yeah the alternative. Um, and we thought about more like a nudging way. So we had it at a university. Uh, we had this vegetarian day and. People were not very enthusiastic about it because they were forced to eat vegetarian. But I think it's more important to do it more like Google does it. They have um, small plates and big plates, and then they have this sign with it. They say you eat less uh, when you choose a, a smaller plate, and you have a healthier uh, weight, all, all things like that. And people really did choose the small plate more often than. And I think you could do it the same way at cafeterias at work, uh, but then with a vegan or vegetarian meals. Yeah. Okay. And also maybe give them recipes afterwards like, uh, that they can make it their own, like be a model as well to show them it's delicious as well. It's also good for your health and also to explain myth like protein that people think I, I need the meat 
but uh, there are living examples that show that you don't. Uh, yeah. So that they all not only do it in that specific context, but that they even take it home and yes. maybe do it in different places. Okay, what, what do you guys think? Would it be effective? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's a nice. It's, it's something which has not been tested with, with meat yet, no. so I think it's uh, yeah, a nice idea. And then the last. Uh, yeah, our behavior is uh, not bringing uh, your own bag to the grocery store and there's several factors which you think influence that, which is uh, one bad memory, laziness, uh, low price of the plastic bags in the shop, uh, the biodegradable factors, because some bags are already like environmentally more friendly. And then we have the factor that uh, some people reuse the plastic bags again as like trash bags. And solutions or interventions we have for that are um, discounts for when you bring your own bag, uh, higher plastic bags prices, uh, only selling reusable bags with higher prices, uh, stop selling bags or bad plastic bags, plastic bags, and then we have uh, put angry messages on bags. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for the last one, uh, different sizes of bags. So when you buy a small amount, you have a, like a small plastic bag for that. I, I like the uh, angry message. <laughs> I think just uh, with, with the smoking, we have all these ugly pictures on it. <coughs> and I don't smoke personally, but I don't like them laying around in my flat. So I say to my roommates, put it in the in your drawer, because I don't want to see it. If you have that, and uh, you don't want to walk around with a bag saying, I'm that for the environment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. I don't know if that's the, the good way of doing this problem. Maybe. Yeah, I do think um, like shops have their own uh, ba plastic bag, so I yeah. don't think they want to sell bags that have those tags <laughs> on it. So. It might be a problem. But I think cigarette companies also don't want to show those uh, messages. No, true, true, yeah. But what was the idea behind uh, the angry messages? Well, um, the, the, the idea uh, behind it was that, uh, uh, that, that you are ashamed of wearing, uh, of, uh, or of having, having that bag. So you walk down the street and yeah, there's on, the, on your back is, uh, is uh, there is uh, stated in capital letters that you are destroy you are destroyer of this world. You are hopefully uh, being ashamed of yourself, and other people uh, look at you and uh, with a bit of uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> another really good uh, good idea of you. Uh, that's, that, that might help. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if that worked in the sense that we, I mean, it looks funny for us now, but I think we would only uh, distance each other uh, and not, well, get, we would maybe get further into the problem because we don't want to identify with people who are shaming us. And uh, I'm not, for us it's fun to watch when people walk with dirty bags, but um, I'm not sure if they would then think like, yeah, I want to be part of that group, which is shaming on me. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know how it all works out. If, uh, if maybe people who do not really care about the environment, they actually kind of feel uh, proud of their bag. I don't know. Or maybe they feel also become aware, like when you wear a plastic bag, that you need like, hmm, is this what I want to be? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it would also be an idea to personalize this kind of reusable line line bag. I don't know what to call it in English language. Because then you if you make it by yourself, you have a personal relationship to your bag actually. And you you think of it more, you're somewhat, I don't know, proud of maybe the whole world, but you like to show it also to other people and so yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, so then it also shows your identity, what you find important. So 
Yeah. That's also yeah what you now see on some of these reusable bags that they uh, have some messages on there. So maybe personalize them even more. Yeah, some final uh, yeah. Thing time. Uh, <laughs> you could help people using a reusable bag uh, to get them because I, I use plastic bags sometimes, but now that I know I have one, it's part of doing groceries. I get the reusable bag and then get my bike to the show. It's like 30 seconds extra action. I, that's that's normal for me, that's a habit now. Instead of just going in the bike and going to the groceries. Where would you get that free bag? Every time you walk out of a shop? Because that wouldn't help. Uh, yeah. However, in, instead of like uh, saying that plastic bags should be shamed or, or, or uh, something like that, you could say like, well, replace for every shop, at least in the Netherlands, replace all those plastic bags with indeed like, um, say, biodegradable or just reusable bags. Um, just to and ask a price premium for it, not like 10 cents. But say like, well, okay, you can have, you can not buy that bag anymore. We don't have it, alas. But you didn't bring your own bag, so now you have like this price premium of say one euro or two euros, and then you get actually a proper bag. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Then you don't have like the negative uh, consequences, but everyone wins, I suppose. Yeah, that's really good. Lots of Indians doing so good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you only have to buy that bag once and if you add you know like if you buy it for two euros I think and then and then if you buy four or eight eight non reusable bags then you're already straight so it's easy. Nice. One one last uh, <laughs> Yeah the the alcohol store here in the Brookstad has that system where they share all bags. And then when you buy wine, you need a big bag because plastic is not good enough. You pay three euros extra. You can keep it or you can just bring it back anytime you like and get the three euros back mm -hmm. and then give it to a new customer. I think that's a really good system. Well, thank you all for all the, the nice input and all the, the, the interesting questions, also the critical questions. I think it's really great how you think about it critically from different disciplines. I'm only yeah, from social psychology, but it's really, it was really great to hear your input as well. And uh, so uh, thank you very much for uh, the attention. Uh.